All right, so it looks like the hearing has wrapped up. We want to dig in deeper. What did we hear? What's the significance? For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga. So, Nicole, Colonial Pipeline CEO Joseph Blount uh, explained why he paid the ransom to the hackers. He said it was a really tough decision. I want to play some of that sound. First, the ransom payment. I made the decision to pay, and I made the decision to keep the information about the payment as confidential as possible. It was the hardest decision I've made in my 39 years in the energy industry, and I know how critical our pipeline is to the country, and I put the interests of the country first. I kept the information closely held because we were concerned about operational safety and security, and we wanted to stay focused on getting the pipeline back up and running. I believe with all my heart, it was the right choice to make. So he talks about wanting to get the pipeline up and running for people, but in cases like this, the government actually advises companies not to pay the ransom. It's not illegal. Was there more, uh, I guess, uh, was this more of a fact-finding hearing than, I guess, than anything else? And what were the senators trying to get from Mr. Blount? Yeah, this absolutely was a fact-finding mission, Anne-Marie. That's a good insight there. And we learned a lot just about the course of the investigation and also the behind-the-scenes decision-making of Colonial Pipeline uh, after Darkside, uh, the ransomware hackers, first infiltrated their IT system. Now, you mentioned there that, you know, it's not illegal to pay the ransom. One thing that I thought was interesting is that uh, the CEO here, Joseph Blount, said that while he was aware it's the federal government's position not to pay ransoms, he doesn't recall having any specific conversations with the FBI or government officials about the decision to pay the ransom. Now, he does say they made the decision on May 7th. That's the first day uh, they were aware uh, that their IT system had been infiltrated, made the decision then and there to pay the ransom but didn't do so until May 8th, um, you know, also learning from Joseph Blount that the de decryption keys that were provided by dark side hackers uh, to sort of undo the damage that had been done were advantageous, uh, but they were not uh, perfect. They were not totally effective. Um, Colonial also saying that they had employed lawyers and other professional negotiators to exchange the payment. Now, in terms of how the hackers actually gained entry into the system, Anne-Marie, of note, uh, you know, Blount confirmed in his Senate testimony today that investigators believe that Darkside infiltrated the company's IT systems through a legacy VPN system that was not intended to be in use. So, uh, you know, in other, in other words, an account that was not actively used and didn't require multi-factor authentication, so only required the use of one password. And for that, he said, quote, we are deeply sorry for the impact that this attack had. So also, you know, learning a little bit more from a Colonial Pipeline about some of the deficiencies on their end. Uh, a lot of the conversation with senators today also centered on what other companies can do, particularly those responsible for critical infrastructure to prevent these kinds of attacks moving forward. You know, we've heard recently from government officials who are warning that it's not a, a question of if, but rather when the next ransomware attack comes. Senator Peters also said legislation is in the works to ensure the government knows when companies are hacked. What do we know about this legislation so far, Nicole? Yeah, well, that's a great question, Vlad. And the Senate Homeland Security Committee has been working on uh, legislation trying to uh, grapple with the question of whether or not there should be mandatory notification of the U.S. government after um, such an attack like this has occurred. Now, after Colonial Pipeline was hacked, uh, TSA did come forward uh, with a new regulation that is now requiring all major pipeline operators to notify the Department of Homeland Security in the event of a, a cyber attack or breach like the one we saw here. Uh, but it is not mandatory in other uh, critical infrastructure sectors, things like our public health care system, uh, things like dams, for instance, our waterways, our wastewater systems. And so we should expect legislation coming from the Hill that sort of requires this uh, reporting uh, to the federal government in the case of uh, a cyber 
cyber hack. You also heard there some frustration from lawmakers because, you know, as we know, Colonial Pipeline did notify the FBI immediately when they found out they were breached. They did not actively reach out to CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency uh, that is often responsible uh, for coordinating some of this response. Um, so some frustration there that uh, perhaps the correct entities were not immediately notified. We heard from the CEO there who, you know, was sort of defending their response. So, you know, any clarity from uh, the federal government on how companies should respond, you know, Blount said would be much appreciated and we should expect legislation like that moving forward. That brings me to my um, next question, I guess. Senator Ossoff asked Mr. Blount uh, what he had learned and what he would recommend um, to Congress based on what he learned. Here's a little bit of that sound. Oh, maybe we don't have that sound. All right. Let's, uh, what did he make? What did you make of the line of questioning from uh, Senator Ossoff and Mr. Blount's an answers? Yeah, well, Senator Ossoff, of course, from the great state of Georgia, which is where uh, Colonial Pipeline is headquartered. It was actually uh, the Atlanta office of the FBI that Colonial Pipeline reached out to uh, initially. And, you know, we heard from Blount, who said uh, the federal government should take a more proactive role in trying to, uh, you know, make the kinds of recommendations to critical infrastructure companies moving forward to proactively bolster their cybersecurity. There were also a lot of questions, including from the senator, about whether or not a Colonial Pipeline participated in a voluntary TSA cybersecurity test. Now, you know, we know based on our reporting that Colonial Pipeline had foregone one of the TSA's voluntary cybersecurity uh, tests prior to this attack. Uh, they, you know, due to COVID-19 restrictions here, uh, the CEO did not deny that, uh, but, but said he was doubtful uh, of whether or not that test would have prevented such an attack from occurring. So, you know, we know now moving forward that TSA has made uh, that sort of test mandatory for companies. But again, you know, this raises a lot of questions about other uh, other critical infrastructure sectors and, and what authority the federal government will have to try to regulate those further. Uh, so we don't find ourselves in this situation again, Anne-Marie. Uh, so, Nicole, Senator Rob Portman confirmed during his opening statement that a vendor that, that house offices, uh, w that a vendor was a victim of a ransomware attack. Um, what do we know about that? Yeah, it's called iConstituent, Vlad, and it's responsible for a sort of coordinating constituent services for about 60 offices of Congress on the House of Representatives side. You know, we l are learning still more about this uh, this morning. But again, you know, as Senator Portman says, it shows that even the U.S. government and its vendors are not immune from this uh, new onslaught of ransomware attacks. And so... Um, you know, moving forward, we're going to hear more from the federal government uh, about how they're going to protect uh, not only the private sector, but also uh, public agencies, also U.S. government vendors from, you know, some of these ongoing attacks. We should also point out, Vlad, that we've heard a lot recently from the Department of Justice about how they're going to uh, recover uh, or try to recover some of these ransomware payments. And so we'd be remiss not to mention that just yesterday uh, the Department of Justice did announce that they had recovered roughly $2.3 million of that $4.3 million payment that was made to Darkside, the ransomware hackers that targeted Colonial Pipeline. Uh, you know, what, part of the reason why that, uh, that value is approximate is because it was paid in cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. But again, you know, uh, some critics will say this is very long overdue, uh, but we are seeing the Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security creating ransomware task forces, trying to get creative about how they're going to uh, prevent these types of attacks moving forward and how they're uh, really going to try to get some of that money uh, back to victims of ransomware attacks, uh, you know, in, in the wake of these things. All right, Nicole Sianga reporting for us. Thank you, Nicole. As always, we appreciate it. Thank you.